Today, let's talk about grain direction when the wood's spinning. Woodturners talk about a concept of supported and unsupported grain a lot. And it's somewhat difficult for new woodworkers to grasp because it all depends upon which direction the tree is going and which way the movement is going. But even non-woodworkers, if you understand this concept of supported and unsupported grain, it can dramatically reduce the amount of tear out you get in furniture making or spoon carving or anything like that. Now I'm going to start out with spindle turning, which is where I think most wood turners need to start and it easily translates into other forms of woodworking. In spindle turning, basically you have a tree and you're laying it down on its side and you're spinning it around its central axis, the pith of the tree so to speak, or you know, we get rid of the pith but that's another subject. So the grain is running along this way. Now the idea in spindle turning is you always want to go turn towards the center of the, the spindle. You never want to pull out. And if you watch the grain right here, you can see why. Wood is very weak along the grain, which is why it was split out. Why you can't cut it smoothly a lot of times, because the cut is actually happening in front of the actual cutting edge, if you're going with the grain. And that's kind of what they call uh, tear out. Whereas if you're going with the grain, you get a nice smooth cut. That's because the wood is basically being severed and separated from the tree ahead of where a crack would normally occur. In spindle turning they always tell you to cut down towards the center because as you cut down towards the center there's always a piece of wood underneath your cut that supports it. I mean you can push down and you can see that effect happening. But if you come up this way well at the, some point there's going to be a fiber at the end where there's no wood out here to help it out. And what happens? It basically splits off, it breaks off. So when you're cutting spindles, you generally go downhill towards the center. You never come up there. That is why when we cut a cove, we will cut down one direction, and then we'll come down the other direction and kind of fidget in the middle. It's never coming all the way in and then coming out because you'll get a mass amount of tear out and it might even split apart whenever you're coming down because this end fiber is not supported by something behind it. But there are other ways wood turners turn the tree when it's laid on its side. One of my favorite is making end grain boxes. But look at the situation right here. You have a cutout where you're hollowing out the box. If we were to apply the rule that you always start from the outside and go towards the center, once you start getting some gap in there, what happens? These fibers are unsupported. They will break off. You'll get tear out. But if you were to come down towards the center and scoop it out, all of a sudden, all those fibers are supported. So a lot of times when you're hollowing out a box, the easiest thing to do is come in with your gouge and begin hollowing it from the center outward. It all depends upon the shape that you're trying to get. You have to take into consideration what way the fibers are laying down. So there is a reason why you would might want to come from the center out, unlike in spindle turning where that would be a big no-no. Now most bowl turning is a different animal altogether because instead of spinning the tree on its central axis, you're actually centering, spinning it around a center point. So the leaves of the roots are going around and around and around. And if you think about that, you take a bowl right out of a tree and the tree's grain is running this way. Well, when you're just looking at the round portion of it, not the scooping or the shaping, but the roundness of it, you can tell that you're going with the grain on this side but against the grain on that side because there's no un the fibers are unsupported with the grain against the grain so at two different spots on most bowls on the interior it's right here and right here on the exterior it's right there and right there you have to cut against the grain and that's why we have tools unique to bowl turning it's also why we like to go into the bowl and not just cut it straight round flat like a plate 
because it allows us to manipulate the grain a little bit so we're not hitting that end grain face on. And what do I mean by that? Well, I have a board right here. It's running lengthwise, so it's going head over heels on at twice every single revolution. And if you look at it, if I'm cutting on this board, I prob this bowl, I probably do not want to do that hollowing technique where I go to the center and come out like I do on an end grain box because these fibers are unsupported. You actually want to press into them so that there's a piece of wood below it farther down that will support it coming in. That's why we generally hollow bowls out our finishing cuts from the rim down to the center. But on the outside, it's exactly opposite because if we went this direction, as you can see, those fibers are unsupported. They would break off. There's nothing holding them on and you would get tear out. So we tend to come from the headstock towards the tailstock or the base towards a rim on the outside of a bowl. And yeah, if you want to be minutiae, there are certain situations where those are reversed. But 99% of the time, that's the way you do the cut. So as you can see, there's a lot more to reading grain direction than just figuring out which way you push your hand plane or put it through your jointer and all that kind of stuff. And there is this idea of supported and unsupported grain. Unsupported grain will give you tear out. And that's the same situation when you are planing a board flat with a hand plane. Because if you're going against the grain, basically those fibers have nothing behind them. They're unsupported, so they break off. Similar concept in turning. So for today's bonus, I want to talk about one of the coolest playlists I've seen on YouTube concerning one of the scariest topics that keeps a lot of people away from turning. Catches. But before we go there, if you've enjoyed this video, please do me a favor. Like, favorite, subscribe. Do all those social medias. Tell your friends. And if you want to patronize us a little bit more, visit my website, WorthEffort.com, where I have a lot more information. I also have an online store where I sell my own woodworking, some swag, and offer some other ways you can patronize us. Catches are probably one of the most scary thing a wood turner deals with. And it can chase a lot of people away from the hobby forever. Tim Yoder has been producing video edu educational video for a long time. He actually had a series with Popular Woodworking Magazine for a while, and he's progressed that onto YouTube. Recently, he did a series, a playlist, so to speak, of dealing what causes catches with specific tools. And he did it in a very unique way where he did slow motion camera work, really tight zooms in, and he actually lets you watch catches happening. Obviously he was kind of campy and was in full camo armor, all that kind of stuff to make it safe for him, but just observing how these things work up close and in slow motion is really, really cool and should alleviate a lot of newbies fears because he shows you how to avoid them at the same time. I'll put a link to that specific playlist down below from Tim Yoder.